Hi everyone, uh, Glenn MacArthur here, the maintainer of AV Linux. Uh, what you are looking at is something brand new and cool. Uh, you are looking at the AVL Drum Kits LV2 plugin uh, created uh, by Robin Garius. Uh, if, if you use Linux uh, for production for any period of time, uh, you'll know who Robin is. He is uh, one of the developers of Ardor, the digital audio workstation we're using in this uh, vi particular video. Uh, he also is a developer for Harrison uh, Mixbus and uh, on his own has authored so many useful uh, and fixed and hacked and uh, improved so many uh, Linux audio programs it's beyond count uh, but uh, of special note are his x42 plugins which include a whole bunch of useful scope metering uh, MIDI plugins uh, there's a lot of stuff in there Swiss Army knife of Linux audio I guess you could call it uh, and also the video timeline feature of Ardor and the Xjadio video uh, uh, video player are also things he's done but I could probably go on for about half an hour uh, of, of more things but we'll stick with the topic at hand uh, the uh, AVL drum kits LV2 plugin now just a quick history lesson uh, <coughs> AVL drum kits are kind of a side project of AV Linux and they are uh, a couple of uh, drum kit libraries uh, based on two separate drum kits. Uh, they are free, uh, licensed under the Creative Commons 3 uh, and they come in three formats. Uh, the Hydrogen Drum Kit uh, format which is H2 Drum Kit is I guess the extension. Uh, they also come as an SFZ a file which is kind of an open specification for sound libraries and they also come in the old tried and true sound font 2 format so um, so they've been available for a couple of years now uh, but what we're looking at here is kind of uh, an evolution and improvement uh, we've taken what's ha what Robin has done is he's taken the existing sound font libraries and he's uh, combined them uh, visually and sonically into an LV2 wrapper and made a plug-in out of them uh, and uh, there's a lot of cool features now uh, I will point out that what you're looking at is an actual photograph of the actual drum kit this is not just an approxim approximation uh, it is or an example drum kit is uh, what you're hearing when we play the samples here are uh, the actual uh, kit pieces uh, that have been sampled and the symbols are all the symbols that have been sampled uh, so uh, one of the things Robin has done is, is put everything visually together uh, so we can kind of audition and have a listen to the kit pieces uh, as you saw uh, when I was playing the sequence there uh, actually let's just solo that and do that again for a sec you can see that uh, the MIDI programming that has uh, been done here in <coughs> Arter's editor window uh, as the uh, MIDI uh, track is being played back uh, that is also reflected in the GUI now <clears throat> as always these um, the plugin here uh, faithfully takes the SF2 or the sound font version so each kit piece here has five velocity layers uh, and as you can see uh, many of the pieces have numerous zones mapped uh, so for instance if you're looking at the snare there will be five center velocity layers and five edge velocity layers uh, so that gives a total of actual 10 samples uh, of the snare drum that can be used uh, and these various samples uh, are triggered by the velocity settings now I would think one of the most things striking things about this that isn't apparent is the plugin you're looking at here is about 40 megabytes in size now if you've used <coughs> excuse me I've got a bit of a cold so if you've used addictive drums on Windows or Superior Drummer or you know something one of the other uh, big drum applications on Windows or Mac uh, you'll know that uh, the installer file <laughs> to get started uh, is is not even anywhere near 40 megabytes 40 megabytes is tiny so we've got good sounds here uh, and we're not taking up you know we're not demanding much of your uh, system memory of your RAM you're not going to uh, you know max out your RAM using these drum kits so <clears throat> for the example I'm, I'm really this isn't going to be a full tutorial I really don't have time for that uh, and I don't think you want to listen to me take the time for that 
So let's get to the nitty gritty. So what you're looking at here then is um, Arter on an Arter arrangement, and we have the plug-in on a, a stereo drum channel. So I mean that's not bad. We can add some uh, plugins. Actually, what I have here is one of the new Arter, uh, the A compressor, which is uh, built into Arter. So you know, uh, by using uh, a little enhancement, uh, we can boost and and pump the sound up a little bit. But ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I think you're going to want to use this plugin. Uh, as stereo for you know quick demos and kind of getting ideas together but what if what if this plugin was available with multiple outputs wouldn't that be cool well I you know rhetorical question there I know the answer to it but let's just clean off uh, let's just clean out the channel here <clears throat> now what if we could have a multiple output now now come on, you can't tell me that a sound font based plugin, you know, with uh, f it's 40 megabytes in size is going to have any features anywhere close to that. Well, I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, but thanks uh, to the ingenuity of Robin, uh, that's exactly what we can do. So let me just find the multiple version here. Well, looky there. So if we, uh, let's uh, play a bit of our sequence again. So we've gone from uh, two uh, stereo, two stereo channels, or one stereo channel, two outputs, to nine outputs. Now you may ask, well, how does nine outputs make sense? Look at all these drums that we have here. Um, <clears throat> well, it makes sense because if you were in an actual studio miking up a drum kit, uh, the common practice would be to close mic the shells, like the kick drum and the, and the toms and the snare and you would probably catch the rest of the kit uh, with some well-placed overhead mics. You may or may not mic the hi-hat. Um, so essentially what, what Robin has done here is he has taken, uh, he has created the outputs uh, to kind of correspond with how you would actually mic a drum kit in a studio. So uh, as we can see, we now have gone uh, from two to nine we're not quite zero to hero yet, but I think we can get to hero pretty quickly. Uh, something, uh, but before before we get to hero, I want to show you something else that's really cool about this plugin. If we go to the editor and we select Arter's pencil tool, uh, that what I would use to draw the MIDI notes in. If you see, if I'm going over uh, the note grid, uh, you can see that it's not just note names and numbers it's actually the names of the kit pieces uh, that you can see here and that is done with something that's called a midnam file now if you uh, were to use the AVL drum kits uh, as the original libraries that were released uh, you can get a separate uh, midnam file and uh, put it in Arter so it does the same thing but Robin has gone one step further here. Uh, this is all uh, integrated into the plugin itself. So the MidNAM file gets automatically loaded when you load the plugin, and then you can see the note names. So I just wanted to show you that because that's that's pretty cool too. So okay, now uh, that was kind of a point uh, we wanted to to cover here. Uh, so um, <clears throat> not sure. Uh, I guess the best way to categorize that is uh, having the plugin as it is here is or as a stereo plugin it is good for working on your arrangement and, and all that kind of stuff but when you get to the mixing phase uh, you would probably like to uh, take all these individual output channels and be able to affect them separately uh, you know with reverbs uh, channel dynamic compression uh, all those sorts of things well uh, our luck is that you know Robin hasn't always only done the plugin here he's also one of the uh, developers of Arter and he's created a feature here uh, for us to fan out to buses or fan out to tracks so I think uh, the usage of this is is kind of more semantics than anything else but uh, let's say we're gonna fan out to tracks so if we select fan out to tracks uh, then we can see uh, that all the nine channels of the plugin now are uh, 
uh, have been created as separate tracks. So, uh, okay, so I have a track here. Well, I'm, I'm, I can add any plugin I want. Uh, you know, uh, for my money, I would recommend uh, the Linux DSP or the Overtone DSP uh, PEQ1A, uh, which uh, gives us the advantage of that old Pultec uh, low end trick. Um, on our snare drum, uh, I could recommend, um, uh, well, our Ardor develops, uh, our Ardor is the basis of Harrison consoles, uh, and the Harrison consoles plugins are, are now included in Ardor, uh, so we could add uh, the drum character plugin uh, with, to the snare drum. Uh, so uh, basically, I mean, I can't go through everything here, but once we get to this point of mix down and we have our separate tracks and buses uh, to use, basically the sky's the limit. You can really do some cool things with uh, affecting these drums. So let's just uh, let's just play our loop a little bit. Oh, we're not. Done. So we can see and hear that our sounds are now on these individual audio tracks. So we have a MIDI plugin with multiple outputs. So in the editor, we're still just doing our thing. We've got a MIDI track, and we can draw our. Uh, oh, what a what a great time to get a text. Um, <clears throat> so we're drawing our our notes in uh, on the MIDI editor and uh, it's on a MIDI track but then we can also fan out to audio tracks which give us the advantage of all that cool audio processing uh, on each track. Now one step further to that is this feature and we can take our uh, so it automatically creates a group of these audio drum tracks and Robin has made it if we right click on the group uh, we can actually add a new subgroup bus and if we look here uh, now we have the, all the individual tracks and they are summed into this bus so there you see we have our MIDI track we have all our individual audio tracks and now we can sum all the audio tracks into a bus uh, then we can do uh, so we can do effects uh, probably channel dynamics or other effects uh, to all the drums at once within a bus So there you have it, the uh, brand new, brand spanking new uh, AV Linux drum kits LV2, uh, which is basically taking my existing AVL drum kits, and uh, Robin Garius has ingeniously wrapped them all up nicely in an LV2 plugin. Uh, I will once again say you get to you get a graphic user interface uh, with the with the actual kit pieces themselves. Uh, you can audition them. You can also uh, you also get the MidNam file, uh, as I showed you briefly there, to, uh, uh, to show the kit piece names when you're programming. Uh, you also get the option of using them stereo or going with the multi-channel output option. Uh, and, uh, you know, for 40, 40, 40 odd megabyte sized uh, drum plugin, I think you'd be hard pressed to find something uh, that sounds better and works better. Uh, for for the size of it, and another a bonus is uh, this is a self-contained plugin. So unlike some other uh, things, even the AVL uh, drum kit libraries, uh, oftentimes you'll work in a sequencer, uh, and you will load a plugin within the sequencer, and then you'll have an external library of some kind that you load into that plugin to use, and that's all fine and good until you archive the session you've been working on and reopen it five years later only to discover oh no I've forgotten where that original library I used was or I didn't save it with the session or I have a four version newer uh, uh, version that doesn't any longer load into the older plugin 
So I think, you know, generally speaking, uh, having this plugin be self-contained like this uh, is also something uh, that makes it a little more future-proof. Uh, not completely, but uh, should help. So I'm sure the next logical question is, where do we get these? And for now, um, uh, Robin has on his x42plugins.com webpage, uh, has a page for these, the AVL drum kits. Uh, and uh, he has a nightly build service going in the background, so uh, he, he creates nightly builds uh, when, when he's actively developing it. And um, uh, also Harrison Mixbus, uh, the next version I believe, or the next version or two is going to have a integrated app inside Mixbus itself uh, to access third-party plugins. Uh, and download them into Mixbus right within the Mixbus session itself. Um, that uh, These uh, drum kits will be part of that. And I don't know if this functionality is coming to Ardor or not, uh, but anyways, in Mixbus you will be able to access them through its uh, in, in internal download application. And um, Robin has also submitted these to the Debian uh, Multimedia, Debian Linux team, so they should be appearing in Debian uh, sometime soon. Uh, perhaps if we're lucky with the next when Debian testing which is called stretch goes uh, stable um, perhaps they will be included perhaps they won't it's hard to say. Um, so, and they, of course they will be included in all any future versions of AV Linux. So uh, I realize there's probably a lot more I've probably introduced as many questions as I've answered but hopefully that gives you a look uh, at Robin's work and uh, and hopefully it's something you find useful uh, and I think it, it kind of scratches an itch uh, and it also uh, we have uh, another great plugin uh, in the Linux world uh, called Drum Gizmo and uh, it's also a multiple output plugin so uh, hopefully this is something if you have a system that's a little older and you don't have quite enough uh, RAM uh, to host the fairly large drum gizmo kits. Uh, hopefully the AVL drum kit LV2 is something uh, that you find useful. Uh, I think it's a win-win either way. So uh, thanks very much and until next time, I'm Glenn MacArthur from AV Linux. Take care.